everybody. <laughs> Hello. We're not in the middle. Can you tell? You're going to hear some nature sounds. Hopefully uh, it's not too distracting while we yeah. record because we are in nature. We are in nature. I'm Peggy Allen. And I'm Amanda Kivit. And Millcast number... 29? I think 29 sounds right. And the reason we are not in the mill uh, is not that we're working overtime on Memorial Day. It's that we're pre-recording. Yeah. And Mondays are the only days that we have the mill to ourselves uh, nowadays. Yeah, without the equipment all uh, banging around. So you're, you're getting wind from nature, but you're not getting the clickety-clack of spinner, pin drafter, carter. So yeah. that's the trade-off. And the reason we are no longer alone in the mill is we actually have something to announce. Yeah. We have hired two great folks to work at the mill and they are all, you know, up and running. Uh, they're running the equipment all by themselves right now. Yeah. Uh, so we've got Emma and Leah. And so we decided it would be fun as the sort of Memorial Day special <laughs> to show you a day in the mill featuring a lot of Emma and Leah and ourselves. Yeah, and, and ourselves running the equipment so yeah it kind of, yeah day in the life of yeah yeah starting with um me putting the key in the front door <laughs> all right so you're in the mill i'm not even probably rolling down my driveway yet because uh mave doesn't go to daycare till 8 30. right and i uh um uh emma held the camera yeah <laughs> <laughs> new new task cameraman <laughs> as i tried to get the sign outside it's a little bit of a wonky shot i think but um yeah we had different things going on um, and then you you did your spectacular arrival. <laughs> yeah, I've got some new wheels, so uh, we'll cut to that. Yeah. I think there's some audio there. Morning. Well, hello. Hello. What uh, you'll have to describe? What are we seeing here? <laughs> this is my new commuter bike. It's, wow. an, it's an e-bike. I got it a few weeks ago as a, an early birthday present. And what's great about it is I can commute with Maeve on the back. You gotta see this. How cute is that? Oh, that's really cute. That's Maeve's womb helmet. Oh, the great. Isn't that the best name for a brand? Womb. Yes. Uh, yeah, so it's about 15 miles from my house and I get here about 10 minutes later than I would if I was driving, so. Pretty sweet. Yeah. And what are we wearing on your hands? Got my mittens. Uh, I'll link in the show notes to the pattern name. I forget. I think it's a petite knit or tin can knits or something like that. Anyways, they're made out of one of my sheep's uh, wool and they keep, I don't know, it's now very nice out, but it was pretty cold this morning when I left. So, so how long does it take you from the time you leave your house? Um, about... 45 minutes, no, half an hour to 45 minutes with the drop-off. Including the drop-off? Including the drop-off. That's so, pretty great. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. And then on the way back, it takes longer. I think it takes like an hour. I haven't really counted because it doesn't matter as much when I show right. up at home. And how's Maeve with it? She loves it. Yeah, it's not, she fell asleep yesterday on the way home because I was taking it with the e-bike. You can kind of decide if you want to work out or not. And so, you know, we had time to kill yesterday afternoon. So I was biking home and it's a really long, like, hill up to my house. And so we were going about five, seven miles an hour. And Maeve's just, I can feel her <laughs> helmet against me totally out. So she loves it. And I get a, a workout and spend time outside. So, yeah, it's Perfect. awesome. All right, so what you're a time to be alive in the state of Vermont when they invented e-bikes. No kidding. All right, so you're going to head in? I'm going to head in. And, uh, yeah, then we'll catch up again. Sounds good. Okay. So I admire that you have the, the bike. It's just not at the top of my list to get a bike. <laughs> totally understand. Uh, maybe, maybe, you know, but we'll see. So uh, we were uh, rinsing, we dyed uh, sea, co sea glass yesterday, and this morning I was rinsing it as Emma was pin drafting Lookout Ledge and Leah was working on um, the Vermont Vice. And it's tricky, splicing two splices together, which you inevitably have to do mm -hmm. uh, so that you don't waste any yarn. But it just takes time to learn. It's a, you just gotta keep trying it and trying it. So um, yeah, they'll master it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and uh, I think both of them are doing fabulous jobs. Oh, We've yeah. had them on uh, spinning a lot of our, you know, making tracks because mm -hmm. we do produce a lot of that here, which, and it's a little bit more of a forgiving fiber than some of the other ones we work with, especially when it comes to custom processing some fibers. Yeah, and, and you get and, the rep repetition of right, it. Right, and, and I'll be honest with you, I'd rather a mistake is made on, on our product and not a right. customer's. Yeah, right? so, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have we had uh, we have skeins drying in the window. I have some aurora borealis there, and I think that was um a uh, world's fair or daybreak. Oh, new daybreak. Da daybreak. Daybreak. Daybreak's yep. there. We uh, we re dyed that one for the first time in a while. Yeah, and I really love that color because it is one of our more like muted colors. Yeah, it's a little bit. Well, more and you neutral. were saying how great it would go with chocolate. Oh my god, with the uh, Savage Heart Farm Farm Fresh uh, chocolate. If someone yeah. did a sweater with that as like the yolk, I would love to see that. Mm. So if anyone needs a sweater idea, you can steal that one. <laughs> right. Daybreak will be on the site soon. And and by the way, folks, we did not like put together extra work just for this like mill cast recording this is what happens oh like, yeah no this is there's always actually like there's more that we should have filmed i'm sure today that we didn't because there's just a no, million but, little tasks but hopefully happening. we'll give you a good sense and i know yeah. you came in while i was on the on on the uh the, the computer trying to figure out because we're now <laughs> i think we've mentioned that the fire marshal basically put the kibosh on our dying using propane Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I, I get it. It might might cause an explosion, but we <laughs> don't, want an explosion. don't want an explosion. But we're trying these induction um, uh, ovens, uh, countertops. Yep. And it's it's really tricky to get the temperature right. So I uh, I took a break and I was on the on the laptop. Yeah. So we'll, we'll cut to that because I think you described a little what you were up to. <laughs> I, I am researching induction stoves. I'm just saying we are having some real trouble. We've we've moved from propane to uh, cook to our dye to um, induction stove tops, and they're great because they don't use as much power. Power, but we're having a little bit of trouble with occasionally burning the wool. And so I thought, what the heck? I'm going to see who else out there is dying roving in a pot to see if there are some tricks to the trade. Back to work. Yeah, and then, uh, let's see, I was in the mill for a little while. So I mm -hmm. first, I had a call first, I think you came in. Right. Uh, I was talking to a local knitwear designer who does machine uh, knitting. Yeah, really, and really beautiful cool stuff. stuff. Yeah. Really cool. Her and her partner are hopefully going to start a little business, and we'll hopefully be able to share more uh, with you about that soon. But I had a call with her to see, if you know, what could potential collaborations be. Yeah. Um, She's uh, up in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, and yeah, just very excited about that potential right. collab. Because ultimately, first of all, we love making yarn, and we love working with people who know how to knit and crochet and weave, but at some point, we'd like to know that we can make our product available to people who are not knitters and crocheters, so right. is there any kind of finished product that we yeah. can make available? Hats, scarves, maybe a vest? So that's, right. that's one of the things we're exploring, because the more wool you wear, the better. Yeah, the more sheep there are, yeah. the more regenerative yeah. agriculture, and yeah, so we're excited to hopefully connect yeah. more folks with their local fiber shed, as it were. Um, that what, we when you are. say fiber shed, what yeah. do you mean by that? Well, it's like a word that came about um, that started in California with Rebecca Burgess. She wrote the book Fiber Shed, yeah. and she sort of started this movement. The word, as I understand it, comes from the word watershed, which okay. is really similar. You know, it's like where the water comes, like where, where everyone's using the same water, um, usually for okay. like farming and that sort of purposes um, but this is like talking about local like fiber production so where does your where do your garments come from or your bedding or you know right. any anything that's fiber related like if it looking into who's around you in your locality that you can um, basically support a sustainable you know industry of, yeah i was gonna say set of businesses right so I, like the mill is definitely a part of absolutely. our local fiber shed it'd be very difficult unless you were sitting around hand spinning all day to get you right. know yarn which then goes into both weaving and knitting and crocheting right. and all that all the rest of yeah. it um so we play you know the, in this area we the northern new england fiber shed has recently sprung out of um you know, sort of centralized around this group in New Hampshire, and I've been a little bit of a part of it, and that's what that round table I showed you last weekend was right. put on by, by that group. 
And so that group is getting funding from the national fiber shed as well as very private cool. funding to support yeah, so this it, industry. It also kind of makes you think, because I know some of the folks that are listening to this are nowhere, they're not in New England. Yep. But this notion of the fiber shed is, is growing and it'd be kind of cool yeah. if you kind of look to see if there was a something like a fiber shed or if nothing else, is there a sheep farm in your area? Is there a mill in your area? Yep. And just to reach out and, and connect because... It, you know, if enough of us are all doing it, we, we'd reach a tipping point and have a real impact on, um, you know, I hate to get overly, I don't know, up on a little political, <laughs> but yeah. get, get the sustainability and really support the, the, the local sheep farms. And we're going to end up talking about that you more. You have a little critter on you. Oh, I got great. It. <laughs> crit, crit, critters? Oh, wait, we're in. We're in nature, folks. There's okay. proof. As long as it's not a tick. <laughs> no, it was, oh. it was just like a little spider. I got okay. it. Don't worry. <laughs> anyway, back to the mill. We still Wait, have, I have a lot. One, I'm sorry. Yeah. I have one thing to add to that, um, and I had almost forgotten to bring it up, this mill cast, and I'd like to talk about it as a surprise for you. The Fiber Shed is hosting a design challenge, which I think really fits in with all of our audience um, and what you might be interested Ooh. in. It's a, They have prizes. So it's a design challenge where you have one year, you have to sign up for, for the design challenge by July 7th okay. through uh, the Northern New England Fiber Shed. So if you're in this Fiber Shed, the design challenge is to create an outfit out using materials in your Fiber Shed okay. as much as possible. And they're doing like first, second, third place. I think the first place prize is $1,000. Get out! Yeah, so I'm gonna sign up for it. and. I am don't need more projects, but this so when you very say cool. outfit, it could be it could be anything. It, it, you know, it depends how many people are participating is how they're going to judge it. But I think it goes from anywhere from like you knit a sweater that could okay. certainly count to like somebody who's going to you know raise their own wool and weave it into tweed and make a suit and you know. Oh, so there's they're going to be judging it on how local it got, or is it going to be have, random? They have it. No, no, they're judging it. Oh boy. They have a category for like the most local. So they when they oh. they've introduced it they. they Sort of okay. did the grand announcement at the round table. I already know who's going to win. <laughs> Me. I, I wish I could say yes. <laughs> but who's going to win? <laughs> someone I know who watches this millcast knows what I'm talking about because she <laughs> always wins. The flowers that are available at the the banquet dinner at the oh, end. I think I know she who you're talking them. about. She's just yeah. So it'll be interesting. I'm not. I'm not I'm not sure I would enter, but you should. I'm going to. I'm really. I have. I would love to crack the code. Like. Here's what Cody wants more than anything. He wants a tweed suit made out of our sheep's wool. And I don't know if I could figure this out in a year, but if I can figure it out, I would love to do it. Oh, you absolutely could. Yeah. Well, the well, thing you is, gotta I have get... to wait for the wool for next year, and then uh, that's the turnaround time is very quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I could possibly, I could possibly figure out how to weave the yarn I've already made because I had two sort of lightweight yarns yep, this year yep. into a tweed. If I, I don't know how well, to weed at all, or I could get Anastasia to help me or something like that. So, could you just weave a vest, or does it need to be a whole on suit? No, yeah, you could weave whatever you want. I, th the thing is very open ended. But right, there is but special would Cody category. be happy with a vest? he'd be happy with anything okay he that would smart like man smart suit. man <laughs> but yeah that you know it's down to the like buttons and the thread like can you find it locally so this is well, what people the buttons for sure buttons for sure the thread it would be a cool challenge Ooh, see i have i but like i do feel like it's a little cheating when you're like a mill owner <laughs> <laughs> yeah you think maybe so, a little bit okay but anyways i'm really excited to see what other folks come up with That's too i think really it's a great cool. idea and so i encourage uh all of you yeah. all if you're in the in northern new england so you know new hampshire maine vermont yeah is there anywhere else in new england am i missing connecticut yep yeah uh northern new england though oh well i don't know well, I think, well, I, well, well won't the, the the rules be on the their website they're on the website yeah. you should enter yeah. or you know i think this is inspired by the global uh, the national fiber shed so you can look into that yeah. in your area very so, cool seems very cool so yeah. back to our mill back tour. to our mill tour <laughs> yeah um uh so i yeah i had the call this morning and then let's see i think we left off around here we, we took some notes folks because yeah. we there's a lot going on and we were we knew we'd want to tell you about it later right we, we we're seeing emma um getting the the spinner ready to do lookout ledge right and so it's well, been pin drafted already right. earlier th today and then it was getting spun right. and okay then, while they're doing that leah was pin drafting the second half of lookout ledge great so we didn't work. have to yeah didn't have to wait <laughs> around and and then there's a little bit of me laying out now that i've washed the 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 sea glass i'm, I'm putting uh sea coast? Sea, no it's sea glass actually not oh, sea it, coast. oh yeah okay yeah. um and you're hearing uh, the audio might be not be very good but anyway i'm hanging out some of the uh, roving 
yeah and you can get just sort of a sense of how many hands like touch every skein it's just like yep. very manual i mean even though we've got these big pieces of machinery yeah yeah and then uh let's see i think emma was doing some vermont vice yep. skein winding yep. uh getting that you know into the the length that we wanted and taking it off the bobbins yep. and then also spinning the lookout ledge as peg mentioned um and then let's see more skein winding oh let's see okay then i took the skeins there was a custom processing order oh uh three ply that yeah I beautiful emma spun it yes yesterday. she did they, they did yes they did <laughs> yeah so emma emma was uh spinning that beautiful order yesterday uh, we did the skein winding yesterday and I rinsed it today. And the reason we rinsed it, I don't know if we've talked about this on the mill cast at all, is because we like um, the fibers put under a ton of tension as it goes through all of the equipment. And especially in the spinner. Especially in the spinner. And so for those fibers that have a lot of crimp to them, especially yeah, it, those get like through the drafting process, they get pulled pretty taut. And so what we like to do is put it into a warm, uh, just water bath, and it lets those fibers sort of go back to the way they want yeah, to I, be. Yeah, I call it go back to their happy place. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, and, yeah. Th and especially the crimpy like Cormo, it just poofs up a little bit. And yeah. I, I was uh, I took that out of the uh, washing machine to hang to hang it. Yeah, it is soft stuff. It's it's soft. Emma did such a great job yeah, spinning it. It's, it's, it's just, very good. I think that customer is going to be really that, happy. And that's Finn. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, so yeah. lovely. Uh, and then Leah was doing some carding, uh, also for a custom processing order. Yep. Some yes, Corbo. Some Corbo, really lovely Corbo. We had to pick that twice. Um, and why do we pick it twice? Well, you've got to open up those locks, and there was a couple, and we've learned our lesson. If you have any any inclination, you might have a problem. Yes. You pick it a second time, because otherwise somebody is under the carter trying to deal with the jam. Oh, my gosh. Last time it was Emma, and they were under there for, like, 40 minutes. I, it was such a bad jam. Yeah, Todd was under there recently. For 40 minutes? <laughs> Not for 40 oh. minutes, but, yeah. So, anyway, that second round of picking really keeps opening up the lock so that when it goes through the carter, it's not going to collect yeah. underneath and do a jam. So, yeah. That, you that, don't want to go under the carter, folks. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's just the way the machine is laid out. You're just sitting on top of, right. like, this and metal I, bar. And I'll, I'll be honest with you. I, everybody knows I don't go under. I, uh, and it isn't about my age. It's just from that early, but the uh, head injury from four years ago, I cannot be upside down or in a strange position. It just uh, yeah. doesn't sit well. Nope. So, uh, so we, we kind of have yeah. a mill policy, like you, you jam it, you unjam it. <laughs> yeah, you jam it, you unjam it, unless it's Peggy, and then it's like, oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're pretty cautious to pick uh, it Yeah, pick it I try. The picking is the quickest thing to do, so we might as well pick, pick it again twice yeah. if there's any inkling that right. it's going to cause problems. Right. Yeah, so Leah was doing some carding, and then Emma finished up the lookout ledge uh, mm -hmm. spinning. Well, the, the singles, and, the singles. and uh, then, then get, get to the plying part. Yep, yep, and then uh, it's Friday at the mill, which means we have chores to do. Yes, we do. So I was starting the chore list off by cleaning the picker, right? Uh, which involves uh, just, you know, getting the dust off of it, emptying out the bag where it collects dust yeah. and um, you know as things get picked part of the that process is actually cleaning the fiber in that it is while opening up the locks it's sort of dropping bits of vegetable matter hay and that sort of yep. thing second cuts hopefully come out at that yep. stage as well yep so throughout the course of a week we can generate quite a lot that needs quite to be a lot removed. of dirt the, yeah. the, the pickers at the top there but it, it can also be at the, the carting stage too so we're going to do some cleaning on the carter yeah, the we'll carter gets of, clean every day. Yeah, the but, picker gets yeah, but, clean once but we'll, a week. We'll clean the, hopefully we'll get to the rollers and, and clean those rollers off on, on the carter. Yep. Um, yeah, so we'll keep showing you more things. Yeah. And um, then our day will end. Yeah, and to be honest with, with you all, the reason we're recording this now and not at the very end of the day uh, is that I have to get back on the bike and go pick up my daughter because yep. her daycare ends early. Life of a working mom. <laughs> hey, I, you know, my line, and I don't know if anybody out there agrees, the most efficient human beings on earth are working moms. I just believe yeah, that. Yeah, you told me that when I was pregnant and worried yeah, about you just, you just, being your business yeah, partner The still. key is to try to keep your sense of humor because you just start figuring out how to think, make things as efficient as possible. And that's part of the reason only I got this bicycle because right. I can get my exercise get, yeah, right. and I only have this marginal increase to my commute by like 10 minutes there you and go. I get my exercise. That well, saves me 30 minutes later on. Wonderful. But you're going to have a great Memorial Weekend. You too. Hey, do you want to share with the Millcast about your, your location? <laughs> I'm not ready to. Maybe in out. another one. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Thanks, hey. everyone, for joining us. Take care. Bye. Wait, what do you... We have to add one more thing. June 2nd. Oh, yes. You've got to come join us. Cody's band is going to be playing. Did you see the email? That's like four days from when this four is going to come out. Ed, did you see the email from Susan down in Rhode Island? Susan in Rhode Island emailed okay. saying, I'm coming on up for the for the open house. I got to oh, see the band. Fabulous. Can I bring my dog? And I had to say, hey, you can bring your dog because there's a little bit of grass out front, but I are hoping that it'll be too busy inside the mill for, for dogs. Yeah. But I love that someone's driving up from Rhode Island. And That's if you're great. if you're on the fence of whether or not to dr make the drive, absolutely do it because there's so much to do in the White River Junction area. Yeah. King Arthur Flower, this great restaurant. So start it on Friday, June second, four to six. Yes. Sounds good. We will see you there. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>